Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Mitch. And we're here at Blockhouse Studios to talk to you about the Epson Pro Series interchangeable lens projectors. At Blockhouse Studios, we specialize in large-scale projection mapping. These projects often require equipment that can withstand the most demanding situations. The Pro Series boasts dynamic projection capabilities with advanced tools like tiling assist, edge blending, and auto color adjustment for fast installation of single or multi-projector setups, all of which utilize internal cameras or external clip-on cameras and are controlled via the Epson Projector Professional Tool, or EPPT software. This software has proven to be an invaluable time saver for our setups and configurations. The EPPT software allows us to adjust and control the projected image, as well as monitor the status of one or more networked projectors. We'll cover the specifics of multi-projector functionality in another video, but for now, we'll give you a general overview. In the Layout Monitoring tab, you can view and organize all of your networked projectors. This is where you will select an individual or group of projectors to control or monitor its IP addresses. You can also monitor the temperature, voltage, and general status. To remotely turn on and off your projectors or to open and close the lens shutter, click the remote icon in the bottom right of your screen. From here, you can also select your projector source. As you can see, we have three projectors here. This is going to be our left projector. This one is our right projector. And this one is our back projector. So we're going to go ahead and select the right projector, go to setting. And then under setting, you will find lens control, initial setting, edge blending, geometry correction, image, black level, scale, and blanking. Under the lens control tab, you'll find lens calibration, which you can see we've already performed a lens calibration, and you only have to do this if you've changed lenses. First, you will want to calibrate your lens with the auto lens calibration function. Once that is complete, you can set your focus, zoom, and distortion if applicable. Distortion is gonna provide improved focus for the edges of your image. Lens distortion is only available on the UST and shorter throw lenses. And on the right side, you'll see the lens shift panel, which is like a visual representation of the available area to shift your lens. Below that is the incremental, left, right, up and down arrows, as well as a value setting, you can enter the number. Below that is the home position, which will just return your projector to center. In the top right, you'll find the lens position memory. Under this, you have 10 memory banks to save different lens shift positions. So let's go ahead and save the position we're in because we know we wanna to return to this later. If we go to save, click okay. Now that's saved under memory bank one. So if we wanted to tell the lens to return to, let's say the home position, and let's go ahead and like move the zoom a little bit. And we can even move the focus as well. And now we can load the memory bank if we click load. And it will return to the exact position and settings that we had before. The next tab to the right is the initial settings. This is where you will go to change aspect ratio, projector orientation, this would be your front, rear, ceiling, and your brightness of your selected projectors, which is particularly useful when matching brightness to multiple projectors. We will cover brightness matching in our video on multiple projector setups. Next is the edge blending tab. We will cover edge blending more in depth in our next video, but this is used to blend the edges of multiple projectors into one seamless image. 
Now we can go to the geometry correction tab. And under here, you'll find several different settings. You'll find keystone, quick corner, curved surface, corner wall, and point correction. It's important to note you cannot mix the quick corner keystone or point correction. You have to choose only one. We have our horizontal correction. We have our vertical correction. Horizontal and vertical keystone correction cannot be used with any other type of geometric correction. Let's go to the quick corner setting. And let's say that we wanted to quick corner into this green box that's just appeared. We could grab the four corners. Let's go with the top left corner first. I find getting it roughed in with the visual tool works great and then using the incremental tool to get it the rest of the way there is a fairly efficient way. Okay, and then let's go ahead and save that to our memory bank. Now, if we wanted to do it in a regular shape like this, we could just grab these upper left corners and bring those in. You can see that the corner points work much like a keystone, except you can individually move each corner. So let's say that those are two positions that we like. Now we can go ahead and go back to memory one, load that up. And there we go. Now that shape has gone back to exactly how we need. Just for example's sake, we can do this. Memory two, load. This is the curved surface setting. If you want to switch the type of grid, there's a few different options up here. Let's start with this one. We can click the center point, pull that down. Pull the center bottom up. And that's good visual representation that'll show what a curved wall is like. You can also do a uh, curved in this direction. And we'll return back. Here you'll find your corner wall. This will let you do distortion where two walls meet. If you were to pull the top and the bottom down again, this time it'll give you a straight edge. And then here is point correction. This is where you can pull up a grid and you can choose a, a vertical and horizontal number. Right now they're locked. So if we go to nine, you can see that'll make a large grid where you can do really specific distortion. Um, so if we were to move a couple of these around here, so next is the image tab under the basic tab, you'll find color mode, which contains several different preset color settings, including a multi projection, which you'll use when using multiple projectors. Under light source mode, you'll find normal, quiet, extended, and custom. We're currently on quiet so that the fan noise is a little bit quieter for our recording here. Um, we'll switch it to custom really quickly. It'll get a little bit brighter and our fans will kick up. But when you're in that mode, you can manually adjust the brightness of the laser. So if I reduce that down, you'll see it can get um, pretty dim all the way down to 10% of your laser. So let's turn that back up. And then we're gonna go ahead and set that back to quiet. The next tab is your color uniformity. Color uniformity is where you can adjust the RGB settings to a specific area of your image. Next is color matching. This is used for matching multiple projectors. Then there's blend curve. This is going to adjust the curve when you're manually overlapping projectors. In the next tab, the RGB CMY, you can select a target color range and let's turn on our pattern display. This is going to show you each color. So if we select red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, you can then change the hue, saturation, and brightness of each of these color ranges. White balance is where you can manually adjust your color temperature. We'll go to 10,000K and go all the way down to 32. 
and you can see the difference in image here. Then under the video tab, we have our image processing. There's fine, fast, and fast two. Then you have frame interpolation. This is for when you have fast moving images such as sports. Um, then there's deinterlaced, which if your footage is interlaced, you may wanna use those settings. The last tab is others, which is just gonna give you uh, brightness, contrast, color saturation, and tint. Um, there's also a dynamic contrast setting, which will make your image darker in darker areas. There's a high speed mode and a normal. The next tab is black level, where you can adjust the overlap brightness when using more than one projector. Under here, you'll find a couple different adjustments for your red, green, and blue, um, as well as an area correction tab, um, which will let you adjust specific areas of the image. The next tab is scale. Under this, you can digitally scale your image. If we turn our scale on manual, we can then adjust the settings manually. This is going to be cropping into your resolution, so you will be losing resolution of your overall projector. You can scale vertically or horizontally, or you can scale both axes simultaneously. And finally, the blanking tab is where you can mask out portions of your image. We can go to the uh, top here. Let's just enter a value of 300. And you can see that will cut the image and crop in either direction. Here in the bottom right, you'll find some quick controls. Here is the shutter the on screen which will make your menu on screen or off screen if you have menu items and then some test patterns under the layout monitoring i'm going to select one projector then go to settings under the settings tab you will find on the far right side camera assist click this button. We will cover screen matching, tiling, and stacking in another video that covers multiple projector configurations. Right now, let's do the color calibration. It should be pointed out the color calibration is for a single projector. It is a separate and different function from the color matching feature. Click the start button. There are several conditions that will make these modes work best, so take note under the conditions button. Since we meet all of those conditions here in our studio, let's click the Start Color Calibration button. This process is going to use the internal cameras to measure the different colors that it's displaying on the screen. After this calibration completes, you should have a more natural and accurate color. Now that the calibration is complete, you can compare the before and after color calibration. We're in a studio setting, so our color is very similar, but there is a slight difference to the eye. Since we're happy with our results, we're gonna click Preserve the Results and Finish. The Epson Pro Series also features excellent solutions for rigging with their stacking frames by Lang. Lang's frames are the perfect addition to the Pro Series projectors, ensuring the projector's safety during transport. These frames are incredibly ergonomic, making the installation process safe, simple, and comfortable. These rigging frames feature tilt, along with horizontal and vertical adjustments. They also allow installers to easily stack the projectors. The frames make it simple to rig to standard truss systems. Like the one here in this basketball arena, they provide us with great flexibility in otherwise difficult projector placements. The Pro Series accommodates a wide range of inputs, and on certain models, like this one here, they feature removable interface slots for customizing your input options. In the field, this type of connectivity is a must. The flexibility is a huge time saver when switching to new or different distribution systems. Another feature that makes this projector so flexible in the field is its support for other specialized lenses, including a zero offset ultra short throw lens. 
Every project for us has a unique setup, and sometimes we don't always know exactly where the projector will need to be. So having the ability to change lenses is absolutely essential for every project we work on. As you can see, the Epson Pro Series is an essential part of our toolkit that we rely on for our most challenging and demanding projects. We hope you check out some of those projects on our website and join us in our next video when we discuss edge blending and other specifics relating to multiple projector setups. From everyone here at Blockhouse Studios, thanks for watching.